In this video series, I'm gonna show you how to use Cursor to make an app even if you don't know any code. You don't need any prior experience to follow this tutorial. Now here's what you're gonna learn in this video series. Number one, we're gonna go over when you would wanna use AI coding for your app because this is not the only way for you to make your app. We'll talk about when it's a good idea and perhaps when you should be a little more cautious about it. Number two, I'm gonna walk you through the process of making an app with AI. We need a roadmap so we know where we're going, right? Number three, I'm gonna tell you all the tools and software you need to get in order to get started with this. Number four, I'm gonna tell you how to set it all up and get up and running. Next, I'm gonna show you how to set up a new project. There are some configuration steps that you're not gonna to wanna to miss or else it's not gonna be as easy. And number six, I'm gonna show you how to plan out your project in a way that is step-by-step -step that makes it easy for AI to help you build. Then I'm gonna show you actually how to tell AI to walk through those steps and build your app. I'm gonna tell you how to troubleshoot some common errors. And lastly, I'm gonna show you how to use AI to also do your design and also to integrate it with your project. Now, I know this seems like a lot of steps, but once you've walked through the process once, you're gonna be able to repeat it to build as many apps as you want. In fact, these are some of the techniques we used to recently launch our daily parent affirmations app. It's live in the app store now and you can download it and I use these exact steps. So by the end of this video series, you're gonna have everything you need to start bringing your app ideas to life. All right, let's get started. So let's start with going over why AI may not be a great idea for your project or when you may need to be a little more cautious. Number one is if you have an existing project, getting AI to work on it, it may be a little bit difficult because it's gonna to have to understand the entire project. If the project is large, it's gonna have a hard time understanding all of it because AI models will have a context window. There's only so much they can keep track of and consider when they're generating code. As a result, you might get duplicated code. It might break functionality that already was working. So I'd be cautious there. Also projects that work with a lot of different proprietary systems. In a lot of corporations, there's old legacy systems and there's software to interface with all of these different systems. Now, if it's a like, public-facing API that's well-documented, AI can go ahead and read the documentation and help you with that. But if it's like a proprietary system, then it's gonna have a lot harder time understanding how to work with it. So I'd be cautious there as well. And then projects that deal with sensitive information. I'm gonna show you how you can make sure that even though you don't know code, you're telling AI to handle that sensitive information in a secure way. Now let's switch gears and talk about when you would wanna use AI coding because it's great for a lot of use cases. Amazing actually. So number one, new projects that are smaller in scope. And this is great to start off your grand vision. So if you have a big app idea, using AI is great for testing the waters for that idea. Just build a small prototype so that you can start testing it and you can do that very quickly just to vet the app. Or maybe the app that you want to build isn't so complicated and it's a smaller contained app. AI does really well with that as well. I can see myself in my day-to-day -day life running into a situation where I think maybe having an app would be great, but I can't find it in the app store. So using AI to whip that up would be amazing. For example, I was going for a walk with my daughter and she saw an interesting looking bug that we haven't seen before. She wanted to identify it. And I said, oh, there's apps that can do this for you. So I got one, but these apps cost a lot of money. They're subscriptions. This is another situation where a bug identifier app is really easy for AI to whip up and you can just connect it to your own, let's say open AI API key. So that's exactly what we did. Okay, so to better understand how AI helps you, let's walk through the normal process of making an iPhone app. First, we use a Mac computer. We download the official development app from Apple called Xcode. Inside Xcode, we write the code for the app. And there's two types of code that we write. Swift code for the app logic and Swift UI code for the user interface, which are the screens that the user sees when they use your app. And then we compile the app. Now compile is just a technical term, meaning we take all of the code we wrote and translate it into machine code that computers can understand. And then we package that machine code into a bundle. That bundle gets sent to the Apple App Store where users can browse for it. And when they download your app, they're downloading that bundle 
and installing it onto their iPhones to use. Now let's consider how AI makes this different. Instead of writing the Swift and Swift UI code manually, we use everyday language to tell AI what we want. We can tell AI how we want the screen to look, how the user should navigate through the app, and what happens when the user taps a button, and so on and so forth. AI will generate all of the Swift and Swift UI code to produce the result that we've asked. And that's why you don't need to know or understand any code, although it certainly helps if you do. Now, the really tricky part working with AI is describing what you want accurately, but we're going to get to that later on. Now, after AI generates your code, the rest of the process is the same. You're still gonna have to compile the code into a bundle and submit that bundle into the App Store. Aside from the coding part, AI can help us in other ways, such as doing app research and planning our app, using AI to generate the design, using AI to produce documentation for the app, using AI to generate app listing descriptions and metadata. Overall, AI helps us speed up our workflow significantly if we know how to use it well. So in this lesson, we covered when it's a good idea to use AI coding and when you should be a little bit more cautious. And we also walked through the normal process of making an iPhone app and how AI helps speed that up. In the next lesson, we're gonna talk about all of the tools and materials that you need and also where to get them. And then we're gonna set them up as well so we can get up and running. So I'll see you in the next lesson right over here. If you have any questions or comments about what we talked about in this lesson, just drop them in a comment below and I'll jump in to answer. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.